What's up everyone, Brian Zane here, and can you feel it? We are rapidly approaching the weekend of WrestleMania 40. It has been billed as the biggest WrestleMania of all time, and when you look at the card over those two nights, when you look at some of the stakes involved and the star power that is there, they can certainly make that claim. This could very well be the biggest WrestleMania of all time. Of course, they love pulling out all the stops on WrestleManias that end in zero. Those 10 year anniversaries are always big deals, and uh, I think that this show will be no exception to that. So it's a lot of stuff to talk about over the course of the weekend. So let me break down my thoughts and predictions uh, for these shows uh, going into the event. We'll begin with night one action, as you do. Uh, the LWO, Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee making his Mania debut against Dominic Mysterio and Santos Escobar. It is a continuation of last year's match with Rey and Dominic in LA. And also you saw Santos turn on the LWO betray Rey Mysterio, and now Dragon Lee, former NXT North American champion, is now in the LWO, going to help Mysterio out. He's being heralded basically already as the next Rey Mysterio. And if you've not seen his work, it is tremendous. Dragon Lee is truly one of the best luchadors out there that I've ever seen, and I think that uh, him getting that endorsement from Rey is really special for him. And I think this is going to be a fun matchup here. I, I cannot wait to see more of the interaction between Rey and Dominic. After we got that preview of it in LA the previous year. I want to see Dragon Lee show out and show up on this show and truly do some crazy stuff. I think this is going to be a really fun match. My prediction here, it's going to be kind of similar to the vibe we got last year, in fact, with Ray and Dominic. I think that Ray and Dragon Lee are going to come out on top here. I think if you want to put over Dragon Lee strong, you have him debut, win alongside a Hall of Famer with as much you know universal fan support as Ray. Uh, it's kind of a no-brainer for me. And speaking of WrestleMania Day, Debuts. What a debut this is fixing to be for Jade Cargill, teaming up with Bianca Belair and Naomi to take on Dakota Kai, Asuka, and Kairi Sane of Damage Control. I mean, what a platform for Jade Cargill to appear on, because she has come in with so much hype after leaving AEW, that mammoth win streak she had being the TBS champion for so long. That really went a long way. Even though she was not perfect, she did see a lot of growth from when she debuted to when she left. And I don't think that can be taken away. And I can only imagine that being under the, the watchful eye of WWE and their performance center that she can only get better. I think that this match is going to be a great showing for her as well. Much like I talked about Dragon Lee, this is going to be a chance for this huge audience to see what Jade Cargill is all about, where she had moments of brilliance. Like she wasn't, I don't think she was a terrible wrestler in AEW. She was very imposing. She had a great star presence and everything. And so I think that she is going to be able to have more of that in WWE with that presentation. I think that she is going to, you know, surprise some people and turn some heads in this matchup. And I also believe the baby faces in this matchup are going to win. A six pack ladder match challenge for the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships. Look, this is gonna go one of two ways for me. I think it's gonna be either a big, incredible, death-defying spot fest we're gonna remember the rest of our lives, or it's gonna be a giant clusterfuck, you know, with that many bodies and ladders involved, or, you know, somewhere in between. Take your pick. Tough one to call, not only with the number of teams in this matchup, but also the recent development on Monday where they said, oh, both belts are gonna be on the line in separate areas, what it sounded like to me. So if that's the case, are they really gonna split those belts up again? I feel that's just like, I don't want to do that. I think those belts should be a floating set of tag belts to go from Raw and SmackDown. That's why they're red and blue. You put them together and you float them, and I think that makes the most sense. I don't think the tag division, as you know, exciting as it is with these teams you see on display, that's still, mm, I don't know, outside that, like, what do you have? I think you need to have floating tag titles, in my opinion. So I really hope they don't split them up in this matchup. That being said, you know, again, hard for me to pick this one. I'm literally gonna, I think anyone has as good a chance as any. I'm gonna say that the Awesome Truth are gonna win here because I have really liked their story. I have always said I hate Babyface Miz, but in this context, having kind of re-earned fans' trust after his war with Gunther and then befriending our truth while that whole thing with the Judgment Day was going on, that's been a really fun story to see. And I think the Miz is kind of being redeemed as a babyface as a result. And our truth, of course, is 
a treasure. And, you know, his story with the Judgment Day, it ain't no Sami Zayn in the bloodline, but I think it'd be a great payoff for that story if Truth and Miz were able to take the titles from the Judgment Day. And so that's my pick. I think uh, whether it's they're splitting the belts or not, I think that the uh, awesome Truth is going to win. To yeet or not to yeet? It's going to be Jay versus Jimmy Uso, brother versus brother. This match is a very long time coming. I was actually thinking in my original kind of predictions, like I'd say six or seven months ago, I was really kind of hopeful Jay would be in the Intercontinental title discussion and fight Gunther for it. But I mean, obviously the story based on what we've seen from last year's Mania and everything that happened after Mania and Jay and Jimmy and the Bloodline Civil War, this makes the most sense. And I think this will be a good matchup here. Um, um, my pick is that Jay wins. I mean, he's he's the one they're pushing here. He's the star out of the two of them. Uh, I'm not saying that Jimmy is necessarily a Marty Jannetty. I don't know where he's going to end up after this. I think it's a good experiment. They're finally letting these guys just be singles guys on their own here. Uh, and I think it's going to be a good matchup. I'm sure we'll have some of those emotional like moments where they're like, grab each other, you're my brother, you're my oose. And then they're going to do a super kick or three and um, that's going to happen. But I think, yeah, Jay's going to win this one. For the Intercontinental Champion, Gunther defense against Sami Zayn, who's really been, you know, they've been trying to keep him on that inspirational underdog hero run. It's a, it's a role he fits incredibly well. And I think that uh, this is going to be, might be a hard match to watch because, you know, Gunther is brutal. Every offensive move he does looks like he can kill you. And in my opinion, few people can sell bodily trauma, head trauma, quite as well as Sami Zayn. So we are going to get some real sympathetic moments here in this matchup. Is it going to be a as hard hitting or as like violent in nature as say Gunther and Ilya Dragunov, I don't know, but I think it's going to be a, an emotional match nonetheless. It's going to be fun. I think the crowd is going to be very, very behind Sammy in this one. And you know, Gunther's run as Intercontinental Champion, it has been amazing. It's brought a level of, you know, work rate uh, for that term and you know, all the different, all the good things about wrestling that we associate. I think Gunther's done a good job elevating that game and making the Intercontinental Championship truly one of the most prestigious belts in WWE today. Um, it's easy to say, oh, Sammy's going to win here and get this big moment. Um, and I want to say that he will. I think I'm, I'm going to go with my gut and say that he wins and breaks the big record from Gunther. Um, and also, kind of piggybacking off this, I believe this is going to lead to a Sammy versus Chad Gable feud. Based on how that gauntlet match ended, and there was a bit of you know debate, I would say, online over whether it should be Gable's match or it should be Sammy's match. And some people said, well, why can't we have both and make it a triple threat? And I get that. Um, so maybe I'm thinking, you know, one of two things is going to happen. I think that Sammy's going to win. Gable immediately turns on him, and that's the next feud. Or Gable costs Sammy the match and Gunther retains, but I'm going to go with my gut again and say Sammy wins. For the Women's World Championship, Rhea Ripley defends against Becky Lynch, and this is going to be, I think, an all-time matchup here. If you liked Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair, I think that this one has the potential to go further beyond that, and I think, uh, you know, it's a hard one to pick because Becky Lynch is, you know, I don't think she's someone who really needs the championship at this point in her career. I don't think Rhea needs a title either at this point, but I think that she is doing a great job kind of, again, building the prestige of the Women's World Championship. So yeah, again, really hard one to pick. I mean, I don't think that it's a burial or an indictment of anyone if they lose in this match. So there must be a winner. And yeah, it's, you know, which one do you go for? I think my gut's telling me that this reign with Rhea as a champion is going to go just a little bit longer. Again, I don't think it's going to hurt Becky at all that she loses this championship. I know she's got the new book out and there might be some kind of tie-in or a desire to give her the belt to further push that. So that is something that's weighing on my mind as well. But I don't know. I just think that Rhea as the champion uh, continuing after Mania, forever how long that is, makes sense to me. So I'm going to go with Rhea Ripley winning. In the main event of night one, we will see The Rock and Roman Reigns teaming up against Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. And if Cody and Seth win, then the Bloodline's banned from ringside during the uh, championship match on Sunday. If Rock and Roman win, it's Bloodline rules. So Cody's going to be an extreme disadvantage come Sunday. And you know, the, ugh, boy, you could write a whole book on just the twists and turns that this storyline has taken us 
Christmas from January 1st of this year to all the way now. Because everyone thought, and I think that was their plan, was The Rock was going to come in and just be like, I'm going to fight for the title now. And they sure seemed to suggest that when Cody seemingly just gave up his spot or was indicating he would give up his spot for the title match to The Rock for no real reason. Other than like, well, you're, you're The Rock and you're a, you know, a bigger star than me in many respects, so have at it. But the fans kind of pull on, again, it's so echoing the, the, the chants and all the fervor from the fans that I remember from WrestleMania 30, where it's like, why are you taking this away from us? Like, this is what we want. And it's, uh, it's even more justified, like I've mentioned in a previous review, because Cody actually won the Rumble. Like Daniel, Daniel Bryan being put in the main, uh, main event at 30 was definitely more of a fan effort where they had to really, you know, WWE had to really finagle things to shoehorn his way into that main event. There is no such finagling needed with Cody in the main event. And they almost fucked it up with The Rock being there and being immediately immediately rejected by the fans, which I've, I'm so glad that WWE this time like immediately pivoted and we, okay, we'll make Rock a heel now and we'll have Cody get his championship match and here's how we'll incorporate it. I think that was a really good job by WWE to listen to the fan reaction and pivot accordingly. Wow, what a breath of fresh air compared to the old regime in this company. I think The Rock is doing a fantastic job as a heel, like this new elevated version of Hollywood Rock. And like I think The Rock's presentation over the last, like in the 10 or so years, I even more than that, like I'd say from 27 on, his presentation in WWE has been so bland and corny and just like to me it never really jived with me. I wouldn't even call it a return to form for The Rock because I think this version of Heel Rock is unlike anything we'd previously seen in the company. He's more aggressive, he swears a lot, he calls everyone hello town of crack whores. He's just very uh, abrasive in a way I don't think he was before and of course invoking Mama Rhodes, the beatdowns he's been giving Cody in the last you know several weeks. Boy sure makes you think that it's Cody and Rock and the main event, doesn't it? I think that's the one one nitpick I have with this whole build is that The Rock coming in here and then being kind of like cast aside as, oh, you're not challenging Roman now after all, just really puts him in this position where either Cody or Roman is going to suffer as a result of The Rock just taking up that space. And right now I think it's Roman, because if you look at Rock and Roman side by side, which of them looks like the bigger star to you? You know, which one looks like they've been getting the massive push for the last four years? It ain't Roman, the guy who's dressed in athleisure wear all the time compared to his much physically larger and imposing cousin who's dressed in outlandish Versace and $500 shirts and all this stuff. Like, The Rock totally dwarfs Roman now. I cannot wait for the inevitable split between those two and The Rock has to cut a promo and turns this, you know, demigod they've pushed for the last four years to dust with a single interview. But that's for the future time. I think that in the moment, The Rock is... It's a weird poison chalice with him right now because he's doing a lot of growth and he's different and more exciting than I've ever seen him in years. But it's at the coming at the expense of your, you know, tribal chief. And I don't know that it makes him look so less of a star at this point now. That being said, as far as this match goes, I think to continue the feud between Rock and Cody, which they're clearly building toward, I think that we are going to have the final boss beat Cody in this matchup here. And that's going to set up bloodline rules for the main event the following evening. Moving on to Sunday's WrestleMania card, there's going to be a six-man match featuring two teams of guys that joined forces earlier in the year. Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits taking on Karrion Cross, Occam, and Rezar, the final testament. I think that uh, both groups kind of having formed when they did was good for everybody involved. I believe the Street Profits had done everything there was to do as a babyface tag team on their own across both shows, and them joining up with Lashley immediately gave them this edge, and with Lashley, he's not really in the world title picture right now, so him kind of associating with these two other guys uh, I think also helps him as well. I always like the Hurt Business. I never know. I never understood why they split that up so soon. And then, of course, with the Final Testament, uh, I think Karrion Cross, somebody who's been kind of languishing for a while since he returned to WWE and uh, him aligning himself with you know, Paul Ellering and the AOP, uh, who I always liked. I was always sad that AOP never got a chance to go beyond like those early pandemic promos where they were in the suits. 
speaking in their native tongue. We never really got any kind of uh, anything growing from that. So for them to have this second chance here and being alive with a guy who could also use the momentum, I think it's great for both both teams, everyone involved. As far as who's going to win this one, I don't know. For me, it's a storyline that even though I can respect where everyone has come from and where they are now, I'm not totally invested in this feud. So I'm just going to kind of guess that uh, Lashley and the Street Profits are going to win this one. Los Angeles Knight battles AJ Styles in singles action. Uh, truth be told, I was looking for the name of a city with AJ as their initials to keep the joke going, but I couldn't. And, and there you have it. But regardless, I think this is going to be a very entertaining matchup. I, I have not seen too many bad AJ Styles matches in my lifetime, let alone at WrestleMania. And, uh, you know, LA Knight has just got the will of the people by his side. I think he is still one of the hottest, you know, uh, faces out there in WWE. He's got that catchphrase. It's easy to do and chant and all that stuff. So uh, imagining the whole crowd full of people at Lincoln Financial chanting, yeah, every time he does something is going to be, you know, that's going to be pretty cool. It's so interesting to me, the fact that, you know, I think it's funny that Eli Drake and AJ Styles were like ships passing in the night, I guess, in Impact. Like, to my knowledge and research, they never interacted there. So it's funny that all these years later, they're both having themselves a match at WrestleMania. As far as who's going to win this one, again, it's really tough for me to call. I think that's the beauty of so many of these matches is that you can make arguments for either person of almost any match winning. And I think you could have just as compelling reasons and results. And I think that's what makes this one on paper seem so great. So again, it's kind of a coin flip for me. But if I had to pick somebody to win, I'd probably say AJ Styles is going to win this one. Yeah, sorry. U.S. Championship triple threat match as Logan Paul defends against Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. Once again, I'm kind of pulling deep down in my heart for Kevin because I want to get that America, America chant. I want to come back here uh, in the channel. So if I don't get that, though, you know, I'll understand. I think this is going to be, uh, you know, you got two really flawless workers in Owens and Orton who can work well with just about anyone and any style. I think they're very chameleon-esque in that way. And you have Logan Paul, who's like, again, we've talked about it before. He's super adept, super fast learner, and has truly gotten the game of wrestling and sports entertainment better than almost any other outsider. And, you know, I think this has the potential to be a really fun, really good matchup here. I don't really predict any stinkers in this show on either night. I think there's not going to be any bad matches, I would I would guess. So, and this is going to be very much the same. Uh, my prediction for this one is that Logan Paul is going to retain. For the WWE Women's Championship, the winner of the Women's Royal Rumble, Bayley, is going to challenge her former friend in EO Sky. This has been uh, a fun story to follow here for Bayley. You know, she was uh, she was the bad apple for a long time. She was that obnoxious, laughing heel and whatnot. She joined and created Damage Control, and they wreaked havoc ever since a couple of years ago at SummerSlam. And uh, it's been a wild ride for that group. And for it to gain the numbers that it did uh, at its peak, I thought was really interesting as well. And the story here of, you know, Bailey finally, you know, getting tired of being talked trash behind her back or in Japanese by all her teammates and everything, finally coming to a head. She said nuts to this and she wants to challenge EO for the belt. That's a great story right there. And I, um, I believe, my belief, my gut feeling for this matchup here is that Bailey's going to win. I think that Bailey, somebody who I think fans have wanted to see have that big, just like, yeah, moment at a WrestleMania. Like I know that she won, I think it was a tag title match at Mania 33 in Orlando. And I feel that ever since then, like that we've been waiting for this big singles moment for Bailey at Mania and it's just never, never arrived yet. And so I think this is going to be it. I think that to counteract Rhea Ripley retaining on Saturday, my prediction, I believe that Bailey will make fans happy and will win the belt off EO. Seth Rollins defends the World Heavyweight Championship against Drew McIntyre and CM Punk, a man who in storyline each man hates, is going to be doing commentary for the matchup. I can remember watching that episode of Raw where they made that announcement where they gave you like, oh, wouldn't you like to see him as referee? Yay! Oh, we'll have him do commentary instead. Uh, that That's cool. All right, I guess. Yay! Uh, I didn't mention this in the Sunday or the Saturday predictions, but I think that Drew McIntyre is going to play a role in costing Seth and Cody the tag match 
on night one, I'm sure he's going to throw in a Claymore or something just to really stick it to Seth and whatnot. I think that Drew has been doing some amazing work as a heel. It's one of the best things about this year in creative, I would say, is just the evolution of Drew McIntyre's character. Because as a, as a baby face for the last umpteen months, to me, he was just kind of there. And I think that now that he's got this edge to him, he's trolling CM Punk at every opportunity and all these things, taking credit for his injury at the Rumble. I think it's some of his best work as a character in a good old long time. I'd say since about 2000. 20 uh, around the pandemic time. So I think that it's a great uh, comeback for, for Drew in this case. It's a real revival for him. Seth Rollins has been doing the company very proud as world champion, but it's my strong belief that Drew is going to get his moment, his big WrestleMania with fans championship victory that he's been denied for so long at this point. I think he'll get that here on night two. Uh, I'm sure we'll get some kind of interaction with him and Punk afterward because the money is him and CM Punk. If CM Punk gets healthy, stays healthy, then boy, that storyline is a powder keg waiting to go off. I cannot wait to see where that angle goes with Drew and Punk. So yes, my money is on Drew winning the belt here. Then, what I'm assuming is going to be bloodline rules for the undisputed WWE Championship as Roman Reigns defends against Cody the Story Rhodes. And uh, this is going to be an overbooked, wackadoo, crazy-ass matchup here. You can bet your bottom dollar. The Rock will definitely be involved in this thing, as will, you know, Jimmy Uso and Sol Sokoa and all the damn bloodline. It's going to be a big mess. But I also want to see a lot of people on the babyface side come to save Cody as well, you know? I remember when the beatdown was happening, they showed a shot of the production truck with Austin and Cena on it, and they're like, oh, is that a deep cut? Are they going to, like, reference that they might show up? Like, I don't know. That might be fans reading into it too much, if you want my opinion. Uh, I don't know if that's going to mean anything, but I think we will get some baby faces to show up and help Cody out in this thing. Um, and, you know, I think that the outcome of this matchup, I believe Cody's going to do it. It fucking better be Cody, because after two years of fans wanting him to finish this story, if he doesn't, I think there's going to be a big backlash to this. Um, and I don't know if WWE will be able to get another year of goodwill out of it. I think that what's going to happen is, I, I, I don't know if The Rock's going to cost Roman the belt or not, because I think that would be a good way to set up their eventual match probably next year at Mania, but I don't know if it's going to happen here, because I don't know. I, I'm very conflicted on that. I think that considering they were throwing kind of like hints early on when The Rock was doing like this instead of this for the bloodline and that was immediately something kind of fans latched on as kind of a red herring, I wonder if that's going to be a sign that The Rock is really just going to put the screws to Roman and, and, and cost him the championship. I would hate for Cody to win the belt after all that with somebody like direct help. But the whole Bloodline saga, from the way it began to like how it's kind of evolved through Sami Zayn, through Cody Rhodes, now The Rock being injected into it, the way they pivoted uh, after what happened in February to get to where they are now, this is certainly like the best storyline that WWE has done in years. And, uh, you know, this feels like a good way to end it and blow things off. So do what you did at WrestleMania 10, at Mania 20, at 30. Let the big baby face beat the bad guy and let everyone go home happy. That's all we want. But what do you think is going to happen at WrestleMania this weekend? Let me know in the comments section below. Sadly, this year, the Regret Crew is going to be breaking a trend. We will not be in Philadelphia this weekend for the festivities. It, it's kind of bittersweet. I, I do like the idea of watching Mania with the comforts of home for once this year and not having to spend all that money to go out and do the big trip and everything. But I will miss the chance of saying hi to a lot of my fans out there and, of course, interacting with my wrestling colleagues. Best of luck to them. I hope they and the fans have the most amazing time in Philadelphia because WrestleMania week, WrestleMania weekend is truly an amazing experience that everyone should experience at least once. Ironically though, I do want to give a shout out to a company that I was at in Pennsylvania a week before WrestleMania, uh, 3LW, Three Legacies Wrestling, that's Ricardo Rodriguez's operation in Lancaster, uh, Central Pennsylvania. It was just, I was part of that show. I was brought in by the We Like Wrestling podcast. Those are amazing guys. Go check them out. They treated me really well. Uh, 3LW was just an amazing experience, you know. It's hard to find 
a wrestling indie where the community has put all their weight behind it and supports it 100%. The turnout that they had at the Lancaster County Convention Center was truly unreal. It was a great show. I was so happy to be a part of it in kind of a backstage capacity, doing interviews with some of the wrestlers. I certainly uh, met a lot of really cool people uh, at that show, and uh, it was a weekend I'll never forget. So thank you to the We Like Wrestling podcast. Thank you to 3LW and Ricardo Rodriguez. You got something special going on there, my friend. So keep up the good work. And if you are in the Pennsylvania area, do check them out because again, they have got something real special growing there. But I'll leave it right there, folks. Please have the best and happiest WrestleMania weekend this year. Matter of fact, stay tuned Saturday morning before night one. I'll be dropping a bonus classic pay-per-view review, a show that I did once cover technically, but many of you have never seen before that review and you're going to get a revamped version of it tomorrow. Stay tuned for that on Saturday morning. But until then, I'm Brian Zane and everyone have a happy WrestleMania.